Hello, welcome to another one of our introductory videos relating to temperature metrology. Today we're going to look at the automation of temperature calibrations. As the demand from industry has grown over recent years, the need for significant time savings has become paramount to the typical calibration laboratory. So here we'll run through a typical configuration and interface this with iCal Easy Isotex automation software to drive through a temperature program, collect the data and create a calibration certificate for issuing to a customer. So here we have a dry block calibrator, a precision thermometer and a milli scanner that can accommodate up to eight inputs. For the inputs today, we are going to calibrate three type T thermocouples, three type N thermocouples, and a PT100. We're going to use a PT100 reference here on channel one, and we're going to connect all this to a laptop and run the software. To connect to the laptop, we would use a serial to USB converter. And then we'll start the software. So firstly, we'll click on the interface section of the iCalEasy software. And you'll see it opens up into a triple palette on the left hand side, showing the compatible instrumentation that can be used and on the middle pane, the file system of the computer being used. We select the dry block that we're using and we're using a site model dry block from Isotech and drag and drop this onto the COM port, which is connected to the converter. We then press start and this should then open the port and bring the signal in from the dry block. And there we are, uh, and it's cycling through each of the inputs. Incidentally here, uh, you can test the connection to the dry block by changing the set point. So we're currently at 19 degrees C, and we can change this to 20 degrees C here within the software straight away. A useful function for most engineers. Next, we select the millikay. So as before, we'll just move across to the, the image over here on the left and drag and drop that onto the next available COM port, COM port 6. And again, move down to the lower part of the screen and press start. And as before with the dry block, this will open the COM port and bring the signals in. The software will also recognize that there is a milli scanner attached and bring in the positions for each of the channels as shown above here. So now we need to label each of the positions and activate each channel on the milli scanner. So we can label where the PRT is, the reference and the thermocouples using the settings tab. So channel one is a PRT on the milli, on the milli K itself and we Mention that this would be our reference. We're going to read in degrees C. This is already logged in the milli K itself as a user probe. Then we'll label each of the other positions, such as the thermocouples. We can change the output of the signal from degrees C to millivolts. And repeat the method for each of the positions accordingly. Mm -hmm. 
and with the PRT Test Pro PT100 on channel 13, we'll read this out in ohms. So we'll simply fill the rest of the positions in. And we're ready to go. You'll notice that we've now enabled each of the channels that we'll be using for this run and disabled any that we're not using. We can also save this channel configuration for future use. Next, we need to set up a run. But before doing so, we'll need to label in the program which is the reference position and which is the set point for the temperature program. This is simply a case of checking the appropriate position. In this case, channel one of the milli-K is our reference thermometer and the set point is that on the dry block. We can also alter the decimal places that we want the results to be shown in. Next, we need to configure the actual test points. But before we do that, we can also take the option of labeling each of the positions with serial numbers, engineers, notes about the run, uh, job references, and any comments particular to the, the work order. So the temperature program. First you'll see a table here and this can be altered if you want to perform test temperatures at temperature calibrations at many points. You can use this scroll bar here at the top. We'll stick to four temperature, temperatures for this demonstration. Our dry block can do negative temperatures so we'll start at minus 20 degrees C up to zero degrees C, 50 degrees C, and 140 degrees C. We will have to remember when this has been reached and finished to park the dry block at a safe temperature. So we'll bring that down to 25 and also the logging interval. We'll choose one minute. Now we can input tolerances where we can say we have stability in the dry block. So these can be adjusted to make the decision on whether to take readings as a result rather than am I reaching the correct temperature. And then once we've reached stability and the test has repeated within that tolerance 10 times, we can then decide to take up to six readings for instance and average these to produce the result for that temperature before proceeding to the next temperature point. Now we're ready to go so we press start and the producer file location for the data I'll call this iCal Easy example. And the run has started and is commencing. The next useful window to see is the data window as it is collated. If we look on the run data, we can see this in a live view and we can see the software making the decisions whether the tolerances that we set are being met and this can be shown for each of the inputs that we have connected. We can also see a graphical view for each of the connections and we can change the colours accordingly. For instance red for the reference. Next, we've finished the run. We'd like to view our data. So we can look, click on viewer, open the data file, 
and let's pick channel 13 for instance where the test PT100 was positioned. This brings in all the values for each of the temperature points. We can see it passed its test for stability because all of these readings are true and then it took a reading at each of the temperature points that we programmed in. And produces a shortened version of the results. Next we need to edit this and send to a certificate builder. So we'll close the interface down and click on builder. Now this is a word processor that also links to the interface so the data can be exported from one side to the other. We can locate the data file as before, so open the data file, scroll down to the position we saved it in, there's channel 13, and bring the data in. Now this is the raw data and we can perform calculations to calibrate these and we have options in this software for calendar van Dusen, ITS90, thermocouple correction coefficients and regression equations. So for instance if we chose calendar van Dusen we would just, as earlier, simply drag and drop the results into the appropriate boxes and calculate. So by way of example, we'll drag and drop the value at zero degrees C. We'll then take one negative value and two positive values. Press calculate and here are our calendar van juice and coefficients. We can also create a lookup table if required. That will show up in Excel. We'd then like to send this to a certificate and we can build our own. So here's a sample certificate. It's a simple word processor package and we can insert fields such as the name of our laboratory, any icons and pictures, but the, the useful part is being able to export the data straight into the certificate from the results file from earlier. We can also in incorporate text fields for the notes if we filled them in, any in. We can then save this as a PDF document for later sending to our customers. And there we have it. Thank you for watching. We do have an accompanying white paper for this video and we'll include a link below. Please don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos.